Hello and welcome to the 2020 Pitt Venture Student Challenge. My name is Evan Pasher and I'm the Vice Chancellor for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the University of Pittsburgh and the Director of the Pitt Innovation Institute. This year's student challenges, which include the Michael G. Wells Healthcare Competition and the Kuzneski Innovation Cup are extra special and it's not just because of the new virtual format. It also happens to be the 10th and 5th anniversaries of these competitions respectively. So it's appropriate to briefly reflect on the impact they have had on building momentum around innovation commercialization at Pitt. When Michael Wells stepped forward a decade ago to sponsor the Wells Healthcare Competition, Pitt had spun out only two companies that year. Fast forward and you will find that the university has averaged more than 18 spin-outs per year over the past three years. That kind of progress is not an accident. It has taken the deliberate and focused building of a new culture of innovation and entrepreneurship at Pitt. The result has been the creation of a robust ecosystem that supports faculty and students at each step of the commercialization process, inspiring and enabling them to take their research that final step from the lab to the market, where it can make a real difference in people's lives. Michael Wells was one of the pioneers who not only had the vision to create this new culture and ecosystem, but also was willing to put his own experience, his own network, and his own money into making it happen. The Wells Student Healthcare Competition has been a critical component of the new spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship at Pitt. Over the previous nine years, there have been 56 finalist teams that have received mentoring and funding to help them accelerate the commercial translation of their work. 16 of those teams have gone on to form startup companies and another six have licensed their technology. Combined, these teams have raised nearly $30 million in follow-on funding. Tonight, you will hear briefly from a few of them how participating in the competition helped start them on the road to success. The momentum the Wells competition created, along with the Randall Family Big Idea competition that began around the same time, helped establish the Innovation Institute as the hub for innovation and entrepreneurship activities at the University of Pittsburgh. Since that time, there has been no greater friends to our efforts to expand the resources available to Pitt innovators than Andy and Laurie Kuznetsky. They both have given tirelessly of their time to counsel our faculty and students. Five years ago, they approached us wanting to know how they could make an even bigger impact. And out of that discussion was born the Kuznetsky Innovation Cup, which has become the perfect complement to the Wells competition to provide an outlet for non-healthcare innovations and in some instances help innovators of healthcare originated ideas expand into non-healthcare areas. Over the past five years there have been 19 finalists in the Kuznetsky Cup and seven have proceeded to startups. So like Wells the nearly 40 percent success rate with more than half a million dollars received in follow-on funding by these companies. Notably 18 of the 19 teams are still actively pursuing their projects, so we anticipate even more developments for these teams in the years to come. So thank you once again to Michael, Andy, and Lori for your ongoing commitment to and investment in Pitt Innovation and Entrepreneurship. You wanted to make a difference, and by any measure, you have done just that. Now, let me turn things over to Paul Petrovich, Associate Business Director at the Innovation Institute, who will take you through the rest of the program. Best of luck to the 2020 finalists. Whether or not you come away with a prize, the Innovation Institute looks forward to working with you to make your discoveries achieve a positive impact on the world. Hail to Pitt, and take it away, Paul. Thank you, Evan, and thank you for joining us for the 2020 Pitt Venture Student Challenge Virtual Awards Ceremony. The Pitt Venture Student Challenge incorporates two student competitions offered by the Innovation Institute, both the result of generous contributions by their namesake supporters. The 
Michael G. Wells Student Healthcare Competition, sponsored by the endowed Michael G. Wells Entrepreneurial Scholars Fund, and the Kuzneski Innovation Cup, sponsored by Lori and Andy Kuzneski. In past years, we would raise a glass to the beginning of Science Week on Pitt's campus and invite you to peruse the Conley Ballroom and meet our innovators one-on-one -on -one to converse about their scientific discoveries and potential impact on society. This year, we come to you virtually with the same intention. To toast to the impact science is having not only in Pittsburgh, but throughout the world. Never before has so many scientists collaborated on a unified mission for both vaccines and therapies to fight COVID-19. And with certainty, we'll prevail so that soon, hopefully in 2021, we will physically meet again. Now let me introduce to you the 2020 Pitt Venture Student Challenge finalist teams. Every year in the United States, over 2 million patients experience healthcare associated infections, and over half of these are from indwelling medical devices. Infections that can ruin lives. When infected, medical devices can become dysfunctional, and this dysfunction means some patients have to undergo risky surgeries to extract that which was supposed to help them. Many times, infections still persist and rage inside the body, prompting aggressive antibiotic treatment that can last for years. We sought to stop this. BioBulwark is a vertically oriented graphene coating capable of slicing open bacterial cell membranes and destroying biofilms that would have run rampant on the device's surface. We look to harness advanced techniques like PACVD to both reduce costs for the healthcare system and improve lives for our patients. With the marketing chops of product development veteran Dick Hellman, expert knowledge and scientific background of Dr. Roy Lang, and work ethic of bioengineering undergraduate Eric Shaker, we look to bring the BioBulwark to every medical implant put in a human body. We look to provide a product we believe in, and we look to give patients the peace of mind that they deserve. Every year, over 200 million people worldwide suffer from peripheral arterial disease, where the narrowed arteries of your lower body lose blood flow. This disease can cause pain in the leg or hip muscles and can be amplified when crouching down and bending the knee. Peripheral arterial disease below the knee is difficult to treat and the prolonging of the disease can result in infection and sometimes amputation. Stents placed below the knee are rigid and inflexible and often patients face secondary issues and must undergo costly secondary procedures within one to two years, making stents an ineffective treatment option. The BioCarpet is a new endovascular device that can be thermoformed to treat peripheral arterial disease occurring in small and complex anatomies, including lesions occurring across joints. Unlike currently available stents, we have created a fully biodegradable device that can conform to the patient's own anatomy. Our BioCarpet device is a flexible, drug-eluting, and fully biodegradable treatment option that will provide the best treatment of peripheral arterial disease occurring in small peripheral arteries. The BioCarpet utilizes a blend of biocompatible polymers and special thermoforming techniques that allow it to have clear structural and mechanical advantages over competitor stents. With the BioCarpet, we are combining the great aspects of stents while improving on what current stents are lacking. With its device's thermoformability, flexibility, biodegradability, and efficiency in drug eluding, the BioCarpet can reduce reintervention, pre-stenosis, and patient costs. Regain your mobility and life. Roll away peripheral arterial disease with the BioCarpet. Molecular diagnostics has revolutionized modern medicine. Because of the rapid evolution of technology, proteomics-based molecular diagnostics is now possible.
For this competition, we have developed a machine learning assisted hybrid targeted shotgun proteomics technology, which we called MATS, as a new generation of clinical tests for personalized medicine. In this novel test, we have developed a new hybrid target shotgun mass spectrometry technology and integrated machine learning algorithms. This allowed us to accurately measure the absolute amounts of thousands of proteins, biomarkers, in a biological sample in a single test at the cost of only a few dollars. Meanwhile, it is a robust, highly specific, and a high throughput test. As more samples are analyzed, MATH will progressively expand the knowledge base in Protein Atlas and iteratively enhance the sensitivity of the testing algorithms. The application of new technology can measure the differential expressing levels of thousands of proteins in a clinical sample to identify drug targets, biomarkers, and others. We, ex we have successfully applied this technology to monitoring kidney transplant injury rejection by quantitative protometer profiling of FFP biopsies to get 100% accuracy in disease diagnostics. Our, our team is formed by Dr. Kevin Xiao from the Department of Pharmacology and Chemical Biology, Dr. Rantawa from the Department of Pathology, and Dr. George Tseng from Biostatics. Since MATS is a multiplex test, we can apply it in the COVID-19 pandemic and implement the screening of COVID-19 virus and its related antibodies in all the clinical tests we will perform without increasing the costs. It is such a hard feeling to be on the waiting list for an organ transplantation, suffering from the complications of your malfunctioned organs, and hope that one day you will receive your needed organs. Today, organs are recovered from donation after brain death or from living donors where blood flow remains normal until the moment of transplant. However, there are not enough. There's more than 70% organ shortage. Only one in four will actually receive a transplant, leaving over 120,000 patients with the immense burden of organ failure. To address the shortage, we are targeting the donation after cardiac death, where the patient suffers from non-survival injuries except brain death. When the patient has pulmonary cardio life support discontinued, the heart begins to fail and perfusion of organs becomes inadequate. This perfusion causes tissue damage, which may make the organs unrecoverable. A cornerstone of our approach is creating a dual chamber organ perfusion stent. The flow of blood in each chamber would circulate as follows. Blood from the heart would continue to flow through the center lumen of the stent to the lower body and return to the heart through normal venous pathways to avoid strain on the dying heart. For organ perfusion, a cannula would deliver blood to an oxygenator and a sheath would carry oxygenated blood to the external step chamber for perfusing only the arteries of the isolated abdominal organs. Using the device, we are keeping the organs healthy for donation. With the aid of our organ perfusion stent, we are not just giving life to the patients on the waiting list, but we are also restoring hope to their families and their beloved ones. Every morning in hospitals all over the world, surgeries begin on a strict schedule. Staff are assigned to rooms and prepare for the cases of the day. Much like air traffic controllers in a busy airport, anesthesiologists must coordinate their staff in caring for patients in the correct operating rooms and surgical locations. These can be all over the hospital and in completely separate buildings. 
At UPMC, as in countless other hospital systems, this is coordinated from a centralized charge board consisting of magnetized name tags, dry erase markers, and diligent staff armed with phones and beepers. Because the charge board exists only in one physical location, staff located inside operating rooms or traveling to offsite locations can no longer view the board or become updated when important changes occur. This method of case tracking in the perioperative period has not changed for decades, but now is the time. Presenting Charge OR, the efficient, easy-to-use mobile and web-based application that allows for efficient and effective case tracking throughout the perioperative period. Right from the main screen, Charge OR allows operating room staff, including anesthesiologists and surgeons, to quickly and easily assess cases planned in their assigned room for the day. With a quick look, they can determine what type of cases are planned and the colleagues with whom they are assigned. With a quick tap on a name, useful information is displayed, including contact information and telephone or beeper numbers. This allows for rapid channels of communication necessary in a busy level one trauma center or on an obstetrics ward, for example. As cases are added, notifications will arrive describing relevant information for a case. The completed version of Charge OR will be able to store important phone numbers and capture timestamp data, including room assignment time, concurrency and delays, all of which are critical in running a safe, efficient anesthesia service. To our knowledge, no applications with this type of functionality exist currently. There are applications on the market that allow for operating room tracking, but they are expensive and cumbersome. Charge OR fills a void in the market so that small private hospitals and large university hospital systems alike can benefit. We see this as a large market opportunity. On behalf of myself and my advisor, Mark Hudson, I'd like to thank you for your time. Hi, my name is John Iconis. I'm sharing a digital dentistry business idea. I'm speaking on behalf of my business colleague, Dr. John Ferentz, who's a faculty member at the University of Pittsburgh School of Dental Medicine. For about four years, John has pursued uh, 3D printing of dentures. Uh, he's attracted some funding, uh, obtained some equipment, and he's right now embarking on a head-to-head -head patient study between baseline methods of producing dentures and digital methods, including 3D printing. This study and some future studies already planned uh, will produce some business value. In the very near term, we've identified our potential first customer, which is the U.S. Army Dental Command. Uh, John has particular insight into the Dental Command, having served 39 years as a U.S. Army officer, first as an engineer, and then for many years as a dentist. And he's already had conversations to get the idea started. So what's needed now is a little bit of financial nudge that will enable us to get together with the customer to, to develop a proposal and establish requirements that will enable us to win this first contract. And what we're looking at is a self-contained, deployable, fieldable unit for the Army in which they can produce dentures for deployed troops on site within about a day. So it's pretty attractive. Uh, this is coming from technology developed at the University of Pittsburgh. We think it's commercially viable. It's going to lead to some future products and, and a viable commercial company. So we're asking for a little financial nudge through this competition. And we ask for your support. Thank you. Roughly one in three adults in the U.S. gets poor sleep on a weekly basis, and this insufficient sleep leads to losses of over $400 billion to U.S. employers annually due to decreased productivity, increased work errors, and increased workdays lost. Individuals working jobs characterized by overnight shifts and long work hours, such as pilots, truck drivers, and medical professionals, may have higher levels of sleep loss and may experience more severe sleep loss-related performance decrements. For example, 40% of trucking accidents have been attributed to sleep loss related impairments. Therefore, there is a need to identify whether individuals are well rested or at increased risk of making a sleep loss related error. Operational performance relies on an ability to respond both quickly and appropriately or accurately. However, current fatigue risk assessment tools only capture the ability to respond quickly. The PACT, or Perception Action Coupling Task, was developed to assess both the ability to respond quickly 
and to respond appropriately. This captures an individual's ability to read and react to their environment and allows PAC to provide behaviorally relevant and actionable information regarding performance decrements that is not usually captured by standard fatigue risk metrics that only assess response speed. PACT will also provide a flexible fatigue risk prediction platform, allowing employers to make informed decisions regarding fatigue risk mitigation. Every year, more than a million people in the United States get a diagnosis like cancer or organ failure that will change the way they live. And every year, more than 200,000 of them will receive an implanted vascular device called a Metaport, or port, to safely and reliably infuse the medications and nutrition they need to fight their disease. The port is a tremendous life-saving tool, but each year, around 5 to 10,000 patients with a Metaport will develop a life-threatening bloodstream infection at home. Fever, one of the earliest signals of infection, is often difficult to notice in people like children and the elderly, who cannot voice their discomfort. Parents and caregivers will tell you they become exhausted with worry over potentially missing a fever at home and delaying arrival to the hospital for antibiotics. It leads to interruptions in sleep patterns, work and school schedules, and family trips. In today's age, there is a growing demand by patients for tools to be able to monitor their health from home. The market for remote health monitoring devices in North America is currently just under $1 billion per year. With the advent of telemedicine, the market is projected to reach almost $3 billion by the year 2025. In response to this growing demand, we have developed a user-friendly solution for detecting fever, Port Thermometer. Port Thermometer is a temperature sensor installed along with the Metaport at the time of implantation. It continuously monitors for fever without needing parents or caregivers to manually check a temperature. When a fever is detected, Port Thermometer notifies an alarm feature on the caregiver's smartphone device, no matter where they are, and allows them to get their loved one to the hospital on time. Port Thermometer does not require the user to wear an external device, making it easy to use in infants and toddlers. What's more, Port Thermometer does not rely on oral or skin temperatures to tell if there is a fever, making it more reliable than other temperature sensing devices. Port Thermometer takes the stress of temperature surveillance off of caregivers so they can take better care of themselves and the ones they love. Nanonairs, revolutionizing airway clinical research. Airway diseases affect over a billion people and flu kills half a million. In the United States, 35 million are affected. We are in the midst of a global COVID-19 pandemic that caused over 1 million deaths. There is a lack of adequate respiratory drugs. It takes 10 to 15 years to develop a drug. Only 1 out of 10,000 compounds get FDA approval. Drug development costs a staggering 2.5 billion per drug. Current preclinical methods have low predictability and high cost. They include cell culture that's human and not systemic, and animal models that are systemic but not human. There is an unmet need for human and systemic models. Our solution is NanoNERS, an organ on chip technology for respiratory diseases. In NanoNERS, cells are collected from a nasal cavity they are loaded with other cells of interest in a microfluidic device. This device is assembled and cells are grown in a standard cell culture incubator. Cell-on-cell -cell interactions can be visualized by imaging. Our competitive advantage include multicellular system close to in vivo, easy access to nasal cells, and multiple disease applications. Total available market is $20 billion and the serviceable obtainable market is $210 million. Organ on chips are poised to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 12%. Please join us, move nanoners and much needed technology closer to market. During the virtual final pitches, judges from outside the University of Pittsburgh were invited to a live student presentation Zoom meeting 
to hear and to question the students to arrive at a decision based on the given criteria. The judges then deliberated to arrive at the winners for the competitions. Before we get to the announcement of this year's winners, we have a few people who we would like to thank. First, a huge thank to this year's competition mentors. Each finalist team was paired with an industry mentor with knowledge in a field related to the team's idea and who provided strategic guidance as the teams explored and developed their opportunities value proposition. Access to these industry professionals assisted the teams in building and improving their ideas beyond what they may have originally thought possible. Thank you to everyone who gave their time with our students throughout this competition. Again, thank you to LaMonica Wiggins, the University of Pittsburgh's Entrepreneurship and Economics Librarian, who provided a workshop on market research techniques and competitive analysis. Additionally, Monica met one-on-one -on -one with many of the finalist teams and directly assisted with their market assessments. Thank you to Lori Kuzneski, the Director of Operations and Marketing at Kuzneski Insurance Group and the financial donor for the Kuzneski Innovation Cup competition. Lori candidly shared her real life stories and guided the teams on how to present their opportunities in an engaging and lightning way. Thank you to Mel Percheski, president of Eagle Ventures. Mel shared his expertise and worked with teams on their elevator pitch where they learned how to articulate their business opportunity and to quickly gain their listeners attention. Finally, this competition would not be possible without the support from our internal and external sponsors. Thank you for your help in making this year's event a great success. Again, a big thank you to all the innovation professionals who gave their time throughout this year's competition. We truly appreciate how you have donated your time to support our students' efforts. As Evan mentioned earlier, this year marks the 10th and 5th year anniversaries of the Michael Wells Student Healthcare Competition and the Kuzneski Innovation Cup Competition. Both competitions have spearheaded remarkable achievements in the commercial translation of pit conceived technology. Achievements that we anticipate recurring for this year's competitors. Many previous winners who continue to work on their opportunities to drive the success of their startup companies often come back and donate their time to assist our entrepreneurial students. Now we would like to share a few stories of their hard work and commitment. Hi, Joe Pugar, uh, Pittsburgh born and bred. University of Pittsburgh Swanson School of Engineering alum and co-founder and CEO of Aruga Technologies. G. Wells competition and the Kuzneski competition fall of 2016 was right at the period of time where we were starting to reach our commercial arms out for Aruga and see if there was anything to grasp. It was at the time where the technology was sort of there, but was the commercial vision there to match it? And was the potential there? And it sort of, like I said, was perfect timing um, in the sense that that was the fall where we had just completed First Gears, the program that sort of let us tip our feet into the Innovation Institute and the capabilities and the programming that was available to us here. And this was the first opportunity to present in a competition for some prize money and actually do a pitch in front of a live audience that was going to actually judge the commercial potential of the technology and the uh, potential startup. So getting in and finding mentors that were going to help us build that pitch deck for the first time actually helped translate not just the science vision, but now a business vision that was going to be necessary to commercialize that technology sort of was the first time that the science had to be the one one of the business um, information. So that was sort of the start of the business. Because uh, Nesky dollars were used mostly on prototype validation, going back to the lab, and now doing more proof of concept experiments rather than just pure research. Up to that point in time, it was very theoretical what we were doing. It was stuff written for publications, not necessarily for patents. The Kuzneski dollars were allowed us to go back into the lab and create a real life system so that we could demonstrate the technology, which came in valuable in future presentations and showing people what Aruga was all about. And then the Wells competition, we were able to further that one step further with specifically the vascular medical applications for Aruga technology, ultimately taking those dollars in a component with other dollars and putting prototypes in animals for the first time to really demonstrate here's a real device being used and how it would in its application and using that to propel the product development aspect of the company forward. We licensed, we formed the company in 2018. We, we received our license to the Fred platform last April, so April 2019. And uh, 
you know, a couple of months after securing the license, you know, we had been doing customer discovery and then, you know, kind of seeding the market of, hey, we're going to we're gonna take this technology out of the university. Here's some of the projects that we could do. Uh, within the first five months, we were approached by two different types of organizations to potentially acquire us. Uh, one of those organizations was a more technology company. The other was a more services company. And um, so we raised a small amount of money to, to see those two possibilities through. Um, you know, going out um, and looking at a possible acquisition right out of the gate is, I guess, not, not all that common, but we, we said, you know, we should at least see, see what this looks like for us. Uh, we opted to decline both of those and ended up partnering with one of those organizations. And, and today that organization is one of our strongest partners and we're going to market with the vaccine deployment strategy solution for every state in the United States. And then we'll ultimately take it global after that. The Kuzneski Cup uh, led to uh, downstream, um, downstream impacts for the company that, that were quite helpful. So the Kuzneskis actually uh, you know, helped make a number of introductions for us beyond winning the, the pitch competition within the university. Uh, they helped connect us to other potential investors. And uh, that all happened stemming from the Innovation Institute's Kuzneski Cup. Thank you to our Pitt Venture Student Challenge alums. Now the moment we have all been waiting for, the winners of the 2020 Pitt Venture Student Challenge. Let's begin with the Kuzneski Innovation Cup competition. Here to announce the winners is Lori and Andy Kuzneski, our generous benefactors of the Kuzneski Innovation Cup competition. I'm Lori Kuzneski. This is my husband, Andy Kuzneski, and our daughter, Amelia. Um, we come from a long line of pit football players and um, sports, pit sports fans um, over the years, so much so that uh, we actually had to plan our wedding around the pit football schedule. Um, and our Andy's family, the Kuzneskis, have been um, sports supporters of the university from a long, long time. Um, since neither one of us played football um, in college, we, um, our passion oh, yeah, yeah, mud football. Uh, yeah, I did chip a tooth right. playing football, but um, <laughs> in college. But um, uh, for us, our passion has always been around innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, whether we're angel investing, um, mentoring companies or advising startup companies, or in our day job at Kuzneski Insurance Group, working with startups and high growth companies is, is pretty much what we're all about. And um, so having this opportunity to support Pitt and innovation and the entrepreneurial spirit um, to us is just a win-win and we're so grateful for this opportunity. Um, today, we got to see some really interesting companies and uh, wanted to thank our judges, Stephen Mueller, uh, Mike Matizic, Alana Diamond, and Jeff McDaniels um, for helping us out and offering their perspective. Um, we had some great debate. I'm happy to say I was the uh, tiebreaker this year, so it was... You voted against us. I voted, I voted against exactly. the rest of my family, but... Um, uh, it was it was really exciting and and always thrilling to see um, what is happening at Pitt and uh, with the students and the professors and and everything that's coming out of Pitt is always exciting. So I'm happy to announce our winners. Um, third place went to uh, it's a five thousand dollar prize and a five hundred dollar student prize and that goes to Nano Nairs. Yay! <laughs> Second place, um, which is a $7,500 prize and $750 student prize, goes to AI Smiles. <laughs> and first place, which is $15,000 and a $1,000 student prize. Drum roll, Amelia. Drum roll. <laughs> goes to Charge OR. Yay. Yay. And unfortunately, we can't hand you the big cup and get our picture taken. And that's probably the hardest yeah. part of this whole thing. But thank you to Pitt for, for making this event happen and for making it 
just as wonderful as it would have been if we'd all been there together in person. But um, we're really excited to see where these companies go and are happy to help in any way that we can moving forward. And um, we'll just say good luck and hail to pit. Hail to pit. Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations to the winners of the 2020 Kuznetsky Innovation Cup. Let's move on to the Michael Wells Student Healthcare Competition. Here to present the winners is Michael Wells, who 10 years ago had the vision to create a program to support student healthcare entrepreneurship at the University of Pittsburgh. Hey everyone, this is Michael Wells coming to you from my home in Princeton, New Jersey. I hope everybody's staying safe and making the best of the situation. Um, I'm gonna be announcing the outcome of the Michael G. Wells Healthcare Competition. But before I do that, I, I wanna thank some people. Uh, first off, I want to thank our judges. Uh, we had a great panel of judges today with exceptional expertise and backgrounds in healthcare, so I really appreciate their input and their time today. I also want to thank the guys from the Innovation Institute, uh, specifically uh, Paul Petrovic and Tony Torres, and the other people behind the scenes that, that I don't see who are able to pull this off every year and make it look so smooth and seamless. I want to thank all of you as well. So this is the 10th year we've been doing this, and it's hard to believe it's been 10 years already. And my vision for this program when we set it up was I wanted to be able to inspire some entrepreneurs to pursue their ideas and eventually have technologies in the marketplace that are making a big difference on, on people's lives. And we've been able to do that. We've had over a dozen companies that have gone on from this competition to raise additional funding and then become standalone startup enterprises. And it's been a real joy for me to watch this develop and grow over the last 10 years. And the, the impetus for this, my, my inspiration for creating this program was because I was a student at Pitt and I had an idea for a new healthcare venture and I had nowhere to go for a guidance, let alone for funding. So I'm so happy that we've been able to reduce those barriers for people who are at Pitt today and for generations of the future to help them get their idea off the ground. Uh, so this is 2020 and it's a very unusual year to say the least. We've all had to make sacrifices and do things differently in a way that we've never ever imagined before. And it's gonna be a different year for the, the Wells competition as well. Obviously, uh, the fact that I'm coming to you through this video to announce the winners uh, is not the way we normally would do it. Also, we had to do the competition and presentations over Zoom, which is certainly not preferred, but we, we made it work. But there's something else that's going to be different this year, and that's how we're going to distribute the awards. In the past, we've had a first, a second, and a third place. Uh, but after the deliberation this year, it became, became clear to the judges that we don't have a clear winner from this year's presentations. I appreciate all the hard work that these, these teams put into their presentations, and their delivery was, was excellent. But it was our determination at the end of the competition that these teams could benefit from a little bit of money and a little bit more time to move their ideas along. So what we're going to do this year is we're going to offer $5,000 in cash to three teams, and we're gonna ask them to come back in the spring and show us their progress. And then the pool of money that was not allocated today for first, second, and third still available and could potentially be awarded at that time for the team or teams that have made demonstrable progress with their, their concept. So today we're gonna to grant $5,000 to Bio Bulwark, Biocarpet, and OPS. So I want to congratulate those three teams for walking away with a check and an opportunity to take that check and show us what you can do with it in order to bring your, your technology, your idea, your thinking to, to the next level. So that about wraps things up for this year's Michael G. Wells competition. I uh, want to thank again everyone who participated, as well as those who, who made it all happen behind the scenes. And I'm hoping that next year we're all going to be back together to do this in person the way we did for the first nine years. And I look forward to the next 10 years of the Michael G. Wells competition. So thank you, everyone. Take care.
Congratulations to our Michael Wells Student Healthcare Competition winning teams. Before we wrap up our virtual awards ceremony, we would like to congratulate all teams who participated in this year's competition. Your hard work and dedication did not go unnoticed. Thank you for adapting to this year's virtual format with enthusiasm and for your countless hours of dedicated time to your projects. We are confident that you will continue working with the Innovation Institute to turn your ideas into realities that you will never lose the drive and fortitude that you have shown by participating in this year's competition. Many thanks to all for tuning into this virtual broadcast. Have a good night, be well, and stay safe.